In this episode, I'm going to cover Flutter widget swapping. I'm going to use a button to set the widget's internal state, and then I'll show the logic to swap the widgets. After that, I'll show how to set the external state to swap the widget as well. So to get started, I'm going to go to Android Studio. I have a simple project that is set up and an iOS simulator running. And in this simple project, I just have a home page. I'm not going to cover this in depth. I just want to give a brief overview to how to swap a widget. So what I'm going to do is go new list view instead of text, new list, list view. And this is going to have some children. Well, let me just clean up the formatting here so I can nest it a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm going to add the first child. I'm going to go button tile, just a generic name, and I'm going to hoist this up just for this tutorial. You can nest it if you want. And I'm going to go bar button tile equals new. Let's see, list tile. It makes for a nice item in the list view. And for the title, I'm going to make this, this widget a new raised button. And I'm going to make an anonymous function here, just in line. And what I want to do is clean up the formatting just a tad here so it's easier to see. So what I'm going to do is then the child is going to be, what will the child be? New text. I'm going to give it a text widget. And this text I'm going to say swap widget. And whoops, I forgot. I have a semicolon that's not terminating there. So this is, so let's just save it. I'm going to go command save on mine just, and this will hot reload. Same as the lightning icon up here, or lightning button. This will do a hot reload. So I can see the swap button. I can press on it in the simulator. The next thing I want to do is add a variable so I can mutate the state. And what I want to do is call this variable swap. And every time I press the button, I'll just invert the value. So I'll go in, invert, invert the value. So then I have to declare the value. I'm going to declare it in my state class. I'm going to declare it right at the top. Boolean swap equals, and I'll initialize it with false. And the reason why I want to initialize it as false because I don't want to have to guard against the MPE. Now there's syntactic sugar that you can use, but I'm not going to cover that in this episode. I'm just going to use this. I'm going to use this to initialize the swap state variable, and I'm going to call this the internal state. I'll cover this a little bit more. I'm going to generalize internal as the variables that mutate the state within this class here, my homepage state, and the arguments that come in on the constructor from my homepage stateful widget, I'm going to call the external state variables or external state members. So I have swap. What do I want to do with swap now? I want to use that to change the state. So on swap, I'm going to show you here in a minute why why this won't actually set the state. I'll come back to that in a moment, but I want to get to the state logic change. Okay, so I'm going to add an if statement. What do I want to do? I'm going to add this swap widget. So I'm going to go swap tile. I'm just going to make a tile here. And I'm going to go var uh, swap tile equals new list tile. I'm going to work this backwards. It'll make more sense in a moment. So I'm going to give this title the swap widget. Why am I using a list tile? It's a simple way to add material design padding and, and such, and it makes for a nice item in the list view. I'm not going to nest the widgets heavily in this tutorial. You can do that um, when you're designing your code. Feel free to do that. But th for this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it simple and hoist up some of the, the construction here. So I'm going to go var swap widget equals new container, which is just an empty space. Or, or that's how I think of it, because container has nothing in it. So I'm going to define that. Then if swap, okay, so what I'm going to do is say, I'm going to swap this widget to a different widget. Let's say new text, Brandon. Okay, so that's my name. And you can see that this isn't going to work. Well, when, when I declare or initialize swap widget, it's inferring the type that is going to be a container, and that's a subclass of widget. So what, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the super type here, or super class. It's more generic, and I'm going to call this widget. So I'm going to define that as a higher up in the hierarchy, and that allows me to use another subclass widget 
which in this case, it's a stateless widget. And then the next thing I want to do, I want to say if swap is false. Now this might not be the best pattern to do, but I just want to show you this logic to get, give you the context of some of the options you can use when you're designing your, your application. So swap widget is going to then, I'm going to say new icon for this one. And I'm going to call the icons a static variable, I think it is. And which one should I pick? I'll just pick the cake. And I'm going to save this and see what happens. It'll uh, hot reload real quick. And you can see the cake is over here. So the swap is false. And so the cake shows up first. So if I click on swap, uh oh, I can't swap the state yet. Why is that? Now this is very important because to change the state, you actually have to use set state. And what does that mean? So I'm going to copy this or cut it and I'll show you set state. And then I'm going to use an anonymous function inside that you could call uh, an outside function or method and inside I'm going to call, I'm going to call swap is not swap. So then it inverts the value from either false to true, true to false. I'm going to hot reload it with the lightning icon at the top this time, hot reload. Okay. I didn't see it swap yet. So let me just hit swap. Okay. There it is. I am now mutating this swap state variable or member inside of my private, my homepage state class. Now that's pretty cool. That's easy to do. Instead of changing visibility or removing the widget, you basically say, I'm going to instantiate a new widget in the place. And I use this internal state variable to tell me which widget is constructed. Now in this case, since I have an if else statement, I no longer actually need the container because there's no way I can get an NPE here. Just in case I can save it and swap it again. Okay. So that works great. What if I want to instantiate the widget with initial value for the swap state? So instead of, uh, I can come up here to my homepage and actually provide it with the swaps initial value to start with. Okay. So how would I do that? So basically I'm going to say swap, I'm going to give it a property of swap equals true in this case. So here I have it here. I have set it false, but I'm going to, I want to set it true initially. So my homepage, which means I have to add a constructor. So how do I do that? So I'm going to go and add a constructor. And in this case, we have to say optional types here with the brackets. And I have to start with a key because each stateful widget potentially uses a global key or key. In this case, I'm going to say key. And then I'm going to say use syntactic sugar to say this value swap is going to be defined. Okay. So I need to go final. In this case, I'm going to use final because it's part of the stateful widget or external variable or external member. I'm going to call this external remember and this internal at the it down here. Now I'm generalizing this just to keep in mind before I finish this, I'm going to go and command click on the staple widget. And just to keep in mind all the definitions of and how it works is explained very well in the comments of the staple widget. This is a great place, a great read. I always have to read it more and more because I don't remember all the behavior right off top of my head, but in general, I just catch the nuances. Okay. So final swap. Oh, let's say final bool swap is, oh, I don't have to do that. So I'm just going to say final bool swap. This says this swap. It's kind of nifty, but I'm missing something here. I got to add a super because I got to send the, the property up to the super class and that's going to be key is going to be key. So the key value, if it's set, we'll pass it to the super class. Now this is just syntactic sugar for dart. It makes it nifty. Um, to construct your constructor with arguments. So I have optional arguments here and this swap is set. So here I have set it to true. It passes it to the external state variable, which is final. How would I access this in my state, my state class? I want to set it. What if I wanted to set it here? Widget dot. Now I reference the widget with widget 
because it, that's how you get to this class. So I widget dot, and then I can go swap. Now you can see that this doesn't work. Well, that's because the state variable is not available at this moment in time when it's when the class is initialized. Now there's another way to get to it. So what I'm going to do is call init state. And so when the state is initialized, I want to set the widget. So let's say swap is equal to widget dot swap. So let's see if I can see this in action. So I'm going to hit hot reload and see if it sets it. Well, I can't really tell. So what I'm going to do is go up here to the play button or run button. And I'm going to start from the beginning. This starts from the beginning. Hot reload continues and reloads it where you're left off. So I'm going to hit start from the beginning runner. Oh, look, I have an issue. This is great because this is a good example. Over here on the left, I can actually see the exception. What I forgot to do is terminate my constructor definition here with a semicolon. So I'm going to start from the beginning again and hit the run button. And this starts the app over. And I can see that I set it to, so what I'm doing is setting the value of swap to true. I pass it to the initial state and, and swap is then set to true. If it was set to false, I would see a cake. If I was set to true, I would see my name. So let's just try that. So initial state is, okay, so that's correct. You see my name, because that's true. Let's say I wanted to change it to false. Up here, change the, change change the external state variable that I'm just referencing in general. I'm going to hit the run button that starts it over from the beginning and the initial state is the cake. And then I can hit swap widget and I can change the state from there. So what if I hit hot reload? You can see it doesn't reload, but if I hit run from the beginning, it runs from the beginning and sets the initial state to false. So in this case, let me just go over this one more time what I did. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom. I have a scaffold, which is a material design widget. In that, it has a body, which is a list view, and then I defined a button tile because it's a nice item to put other widgets in. And then I put a list tile, or swap tile, that is a list tile, and it contains the swap widget. And I didn't nest these widgets. You can in yours, it makes it nice to be able to identify your tree. And in this case, I then added logic to say, when my state variable says it is true, I will say swap widget is then a text widget. If it is false, I will make it an icon widget. So it's pretty simple to change state and in that state to just swap out widgets. Now this originally took me some thought process because I came from the web world and a lot of times you removed and added the element or you could change the visibility. In this case, you just wipe it out. Now, just one more thought. If you want a plain container that has no, no space or no visibility or, or you want to just put something there as a placeholder, you could use container, new, new container. And to give an idea what that looks like, let's just cut that. And instead of the cake icon, I'm going to put the container. Okay, as you can see, it just went away. There's nothing there. So I'm going to remove, revert and save that with hot reload. It loads up and there's the cake. Well, that's it for today. I'll put a link to this source in the bottom of the comments. If you want to try it out, copy it and make a generic project and paste that into your, uh, your project and you can try it out. Thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks and I'll catch you later.